What I tried to give you today, this morning, is a short overview on what will be the themes that will greet us in 2013. And when I, when I looked at it, I came to the film Groundhog Day. So it, it has to do something when you look at 2013 that what you have seen in 2012 again, and that will drive also a lot of the investment behavior. And the main theme will be the euro and what I try to symbolize with this down here, a little bit of the construction of the Eurozone, that will uh, be the main drivers for a lot of the investment activity and a lot of uh, the, the strategies the investors will look at. <clears throat> when we look at the markets today, they are characterized by, by increasingly rising debt levels. And at the same time, we have rock bottom interest rates from the central bank side, which on, on the one hand, low interest rates should be looking very attractive for, for investors as Normally, you should get uh, good financing conditions. But given that the banks ran into trouble, not least due to some of the, the things we see here on the government finance side, financing conditions might not be that good as for a lot of investors as one should expect given the, the interest rate environment. At the same time, what, what, uh, when we go forward will be an issue. A lot of the central banks indicated that interest rates will remain low as they have been for the last two, three years. The Fed says they will leave interest rates on this level at least till 2014. And I cannot imagine that the European Central Bank do, do, does a lot of different things. The Riks Bank is, was coming back with their interest rates level again. The only central bank in Europe I can imagine that might be a little counter-cyclical in this respect might be the Norges Bank in Norway as their economy is, is going a little different way. But that's also, from an investor point of view, Norway is seen as a safe haven, but it's a market that's very hard to enter, given the, the, the speed of transactions that's taking place in Norway. And at the same time, it's getting pricey in some respect. When we look at the growth environment, which is quite interesting, actually, uh, on the global level, what we see on the left side is that global growth for the coming years is substantially below the long-term average, which is represented by the, by the yellow line. But what we also have to say that this global growth is mainly driven by the developing countries and not so much by the developed economies. At the same time, this strong global growth drives energy prices. I represent them here by, by Brent crude oil prices, which in some cases, especially in the private investor side, fuel so, uh, the, the fear of, of an inflation run coming to the market. But if we, we go a little closer to Europe, starting with this global environment, we see that although global growth might be below long-term trend and might be substantially below long-term trend, when we look at Europe, we have a very sluggish growth environment. There's not a real growth story. Maybe the exception is a little bit Norway and, and Poland to, to a certain extent where we have growth. But even in Poland, growth is not as it has been. And I'm to, looking at 2013 in Poland, I'm a little more skeptical today and as I have been about two or three months ago. So I would say there's more risk to the downside on this growth forecast, especially for Poland, uh, than it has been two or three months uh, ago. So we have a, a sluggish growth environment in Europe. And at the same time, if we look at the inflation outlook, to be honest, uh, if we see the target of the ECB as, as, let's say, neutral inflation, which is around 2%, there is no, no fear or no threat of inflation in any European country for the next one, two years to come. So summing this up, we have a low growth environment. We have a low inflation environment. And at the same time, we have a low interest rate environment, which is a situation when you look at what uh, property investors are used to, that's something we never had experience in the last 20, 30 years of. We had low growth with high inflation and high interest rates. We called it normally stockflation. But uh, we, we also had a little bit of high growth, high interest rates, and, and low inflation, maybe. But we never had low growth, low inflation, and, and low interest rates. So we are entering a little bit of uncharted territory. Now we, we operate in this territory for two years already. But given that <clears throat> there is still a lot of insecurity out in the markets on how, especially in the Eurozone, the crisis will be resolved, the question for a lot of investors is, where should, you, where should we invest? Where do we go for? So on the other side, talking about the Eurozone, uh, looking at government's bond spreads against uh, Germany here in the, in the graph, you see one thing, that uh, up till 2008, we had one Eurozone, and nobody believed in that there was any risk in the, in the different countries. 
if we look at today's uh, spread levels, we see that the market, at least on the government bond side, is differentiating between the different countries in the Eurozone. And a lot of time, uh, the risk is priced in that there might be a breakup in the Eurozone. Being an, econ being an economist by training, I would say it's an interesting academic thought experiment to think that someone is now today leaving the Eurozone. But uh, to be honest, I don't believe that it's practically possible. To, to exit one country from the Eurozone without risking to break up the whole Euro idea, and with this also a little bit of the European integration idea. So I would say for the property investors in the medium term, they, they can expect that the Euro will persist in, in this form we see it today and that no country will leave. So the risk premium for the government bond side are fine, and they might indicate some of the underlying problems the, the economies have, but they will definitely not indicate that one of the countries will leave. But what we also see is that risk premium for Portugal, for Ireland, they are showing a, a downward trend again as, as the, the markets more and more realize that <clears throat> the, 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 the governments are imp improving their performance. And at the same time, if you look for the property markets, especially for Ireland, for instance, it's a very interesting point to, to enter the Irish market currently. As you do, Looking at the office market, you had no, growth, no construction for the last three, four years in the, in the Dublin office market. And if you look today for, for larger lot sizes uh, as a tenant in Dublin, it's hard for you to find any reasonable modern space in any, any sub-market of Dublin, especially in the thought of the markets Dublin 2 or Dublin 4. So, so there is potential in the markets that if the investors wouldn't be that risk averse as they are because they see the insecure environment, can tap in. And when you see what's happened in the last, let's say, 6 to 12 months in the Irish market, a lot of, let's say, Anglo-Saxon, especially US investors entered the market because they see this opportunity. For a lot of the German insurance companies, pension funds, they still look at the markets in the, the, the economic way, saying we have these PICS countries, the fringe, the Euro fringe, where we see the risk. It's, it's, it's Ireland, it's Italy, it's Portugal, it's Spain. I leave Greece out of the calculation because I think Greece is a little bit of a different story and it's for a property investor, not a market he would touch on. But looking at the, the four other PICS countries, I would say they're they are offering opportunities, especially as repricing in, this market has, in these markets has gone very far. And if you look for high street retail in Madrid or in Milan, that's still, at, let's say, hardly pr uh, attractively priced to a certain extent, and you can enter the market on a medium to long term with some, some capital growth perspectives. <clears throat> so you, if you look at this environment, uh, the, the economic challenges that the, the Euro is, uh, zone or Europe is facing, I, I listed them, them up. One of the things that I don't want to go them step by step, one of the things I'd, I want to touch here a little more on is, is regulation. We're still living in, in a, as a property investor in, in an environment where we know that some regulations will be in place during next year, but we did not, still not know how the regulation will look like. So uh, that is also one of the things uh, that, that gives the investor a feeling that, uh, that he wants to be secure on his investments. That's also one of the drivers why everybody goes for core, because that's why, where he can be sure that at least He's not running into trouble from the re regulatory side that uh, capital he has to set aside for the investments or whatever. And at the same time, a lot of these challenges we, we had to, we still have this year, we will, will go on for next year. And I, I for therefore strongly believe that the investment activity of most investors in 2013 will not differ to a large extent of what they have done in 2012. We, we see a run for core. And if you look for core and you look for the run for core, you see strongly that's uh, the 41 office markets across Europe and that's just counted the markets that with rising yields and with falling yields. You see strongly that you have rising yields in after the crisis when, when nearly all markets showed rising yields, that means falling prices. And after that, you see the bounce back of a lot of the core markets where the investors, <coughs> at least some opportunistic investors or some brave investors entered the markets. But when you look at the, at the current end, you see that falling yields are coming to an end in, in, in a lot of markets today. Because if you see mar market yields, if you look at London or at some of the German markets, they have reached levels again where, from a even in historical context, and uh, the, the yield levels are 
on such a low level saying there is not a lot of potential to, for yields going further down. And at the same time, if you look at the other end of the market, you see yields rising, although this is mainly concentrated to Spain, to Italy, but also markets like Manchester see now rising yields as investors are, are getting a little more risk averse and, and some more skeptical about the perspectives. And if, if we go out or go forward and we see that there's not a lot of rental growth potential from the economic side driving the market. So where is the argument of, of falling yields to continue? So we, we, I would expect that next year we see a lot of sideways movement in yields and possibly in some markets some, some slightly rising yields as the economic environment is not that attractive. The only markets where that might see some, that have some potential in the medium term, meaning 2014 and 15 possibly to, for yields uh, lowering, are some of the PICS countries because there is no supply coming to the market. There is a lot of pressure on prices still to, to, still to be seen there, but as, as it is in Dublin now, yields are more or less sideways movements. You have rental growth potential that can kick in by the end of next year, so there's a potential that markets might turn. Given, <clears throat> given this environment, the, the search for security it's mirrored in, in, the, in the investment activity currently. We see, heavily ri uh, we see rising activity in the Nordics. At the same time, in continental Europe, the, the investment activity is going down, mainly due to the investment activity in the south that is, that is depressed, given that it's very hard to, for, for an investor to go to an investment committee of a German bank, uh, of a German insurance company or pension fund saying, I want to do an investment in Spain. Uh, the, the, any investment committee of, of these companies will tell you you are nuts going for, for Spain or, or northern Italy because they just see the economic situation, although from the property fundamental perspective, uh, some of these investments might be really, really worthwhile. So what I expect is that in these markets we see activity in, the, in, the, in next year, but it will be more on the value add opportunistic style investments, not because the property is opportunistic or value add, just simply because no core investors will be willing to accept uh, most of the time a Milan or Madrid building in, in a core fund as they don't view the country core currently. So that, that's uh, adding to the insecurity as we will get another discussion about what is core. Is it from the property side, is it the country side? And a lot of German investors currently when we talk to them say, we, we, we will never touch Italy or Spain just because we don't view it as a core country. Although they, they might believe in, in the property story, but they know that the investment committee cannot be convinced. At the same time, the Nordics are seen from everybody as an attractive point to enter the market now as a secure investment. But you have to be aware of one thing. If you go for the Nordics, you go for four, four currencies. That sometimes you talk about the Nordic markets, but you really talk about four currencies. You have the euro in Finland, you have the krones in Denmark and Sweden and in Norway. Danish krone is, is pegged to the euro, so there's no currency risk you can talk about. But in Sweden and Norway, the question is, are the investors brave enough to, to go unhedged? If they go hedged and you're Eurozone investors, you're not competitive in, in these markets. So that's also one of the stories that you have to keep in mind when, when talking to an investors and deciding on your strategy. Do you want to go hedged or not? That's also something about the story when going to the UK. It's, it's a market, yes, you have a liquid hedging market, but the hedging is, is expensive and it prices you out of the market to a certain extent. And if you can be competitive on bidding, including hedging costs, you still have to think of why. Why is no local investor willing to invest while I have the hedging costs and I'm still competitive on price? And going on with this, uh, a lot of times when you talk to investors, they tell you, yes, it's attractive, property is attractive price to government bond yields. That's really the case. If you look, that's for Germany. I've looked at the top, top office markets on the average yield compared to, to government 10-year government bonds. Yes, you, it's very attractive on these historical terms, but you have to keep in mind why is it attractive. And uh, I, I suspect that we have to, to think or reasonably have to think about a bond bubble more than about an active risk pricing of property in that point. And if this is a bond bubble, what's happening if bond yields correct? It will not happen 2013, possibly not 2014, as I, I said in the first place, that we have a low interest rate environment for the next two, three years to come. 
But what's happening if we have the correction on the bond side with the, with the property yields? Do we get a reassessment of risk of property again, which is very likely because if you imagine bond yields going up 200 basis points, which is easily the case if you look where they have been in 2008 and where they are today, that was a drop of, let's say, it's nearly 300 basis points. So that can, can reverse itself very quickly. But the question is, will the yields remain flat during that time? And if so, why? Do we see a lot of rental growth entering the market that can, re can be reasonably argued to, to let's say, counteract these, these, these risk-free rate rise? And, uh, and I don't expect this to happen, if, especially if you look at the German markets. So the question will be, what will happen on pricing of property in, in three, four years' time? And that's what investors will increasingly have to keep in mind, because I also can imagine that some of the people going in the market today because they say it's attractively priced. They just go in to get a running yield out of property today. And if they see bond markets returning to a little bit of life with the yields on the bond market around 2.5%, 3%, they might exit the property market again and may be willing to accept value losses just because to be in a more liquid asset class. And that can have an overall effect on the, on the property yield level. And that will be not constrained to the German market, but it will be heavily constrained to the core markets because the difference between core and secondary yields is on a very high level today because the people are just running for core no matter uh, how attractive uh, buildings nearby are. And if you have a, a core location, that might be a story for next year. If you have a core location with some, something to work on on the, on the tenant structure, on, on refurbishments or whatever, that might be something for investors to look at if they have their own capacity to do this kind of working on the asset. And that's the other point. And not all investors will have the capacity. Because if you outsource all these things, you run a risk that you'll end up with a lot of monitoring. And the question is, how can you really do this to, to a certain extent? So that is, I think, the main background for, for next years to come. So it will be a little bit of uh, Groundhog Day as we have the same stories as this year. The insecurity might be coming from different angles, not the same sources as we have them seen this year, but the, the Eurozone problem might not be solved in 2013. It will be another four or five years before we get a political solution. Until then, we have a muddling through of the Eurozone, which will influence investor behavior. But if you believe in the European integration idea and the Euro, you can go all in all Euro countries without being afraid of getting any risk of, break, of a breaking up of the currency. Because I think it's a nice academic experiment, but it's very unlikely that, that we get a, any kind of real breaking up of, of the Eurozone. So that, I think, is the main thought I, I have on, on the background of the markets. And the rest, then, is it's driven driven by opportunity. Uh, the deals will be driven by opportunity, what's coming to the market. We've seen in Germany this year a lot of regulatory issues that drove the residential market. A lot of uh, NPL things might come to the market, but the question is which bank can take the write downs. That has something to do with capital requirements and how they will end up in the, the medium to long term. So that's also something we will need a couple of months time before we really know what the banks are, are, are possibly can do in next year time. So thanks, that's my thoughts on what will drive or frame the activity in 2013.